Hi, Bill. Hi, Sandy. It's been a while. How are you? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because the title is What a Laugh. Ah! Really <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this just a, is this just a show where you just laugh at me? Is that what is that, that what's going well, There's go? lots of things about laughing therapy, isn't there? We could right, <laughs> we true. could we could laugh ourselves silly, or we could laugh ourselves well. You know, do you ever hear the stuff where it says that even if you're not finding something funny, just the act of forcing yourself to laugh makes you feel better? Well, I, I, I remember this actually a period in my life when I was very, very, very unhappy. Uh, and I would force myself to smile in the mirror. And it did make me feel better. <laughs> it did make me feel better. better Al alongside better. making me feel like I was totally mad. Uh, it did actually have a very positive impact on how I, on how I was feeling. Anyway, this, evening, this evening's title, What a Laugh, a conversation with Bill Woodman, that's you. That's and we haven't spoken for, I think, five weeks or even six weeks. Far too long. A long time. Um, so, what a laugh. Here we go. So I don't think you know this artist, which is I puzzling because it's one of the, or he is one of the most or uh, famous contemporary artists, really. Well, that's where you lose me. I don't know much contemporary art. Hmm. But yeah. And and what's interesting for those people who don't know, um, Yu Minjun is famous for these kinds of images. So repeated uh, laughing heads and they're him they're always these kind of self-portraits always multiples or usually multiples um where there's almost like an avalanche of these quite grotesque seeming laughing faces yeah it's sometimes laughter tips over into creepy very easily yeah and this is actually what i really want to talk about you know the idea of there being like laughter conjures a sense perhaps of there being some kind of joy um and I, I don't think that's necessarily the case and likewise I, I wonder if there's actually kindness ever in laughter like can I mean, laughter yeah there's a lot of cruelty in laughter too right yeah yeah so when we look at a painting like this you know this is a comment on things other than laughter of course but the laughter is used to perhaps create unease um, as somebody who grew up in a north eastern province of China um, he's 60 this year uh, you know he's he's used to seeing like a shifting shifting culture or awareness of a wider global culture um, that's kind of at odds with tradition um, how you know China has grown in a way that at once disconnects it from its um well again yeah that word tradition yeah I, I wonder how contemporary China really finds its culture is it, is it a kind of rebirth into culture or is it something that has to yield a new thing always I, I mean well, it's, the artist is poking fun at all those kinds of notions I mean, you also have this incredibly traditional country in so many ways, yeah. a culture in so many ways. And yet you have a political system that in one way wants to extend that tradition, but in another, in another realm has done a whole lot of work to destroy that tradition, right? Yeah. Um, so it's this interesting, uh, you know, we choose to keep the things we want to keep and the things we want to erase get erased. I think there's also an element especially in this of being a single person looking at a mass of people smiling and seemingly laughing. There is a little bit of a, Oh my God, they're laughing at me. It's threatening. Yes. It's quite an intense yeah. and intimidating um, yeah. thing to see. And again, for, I could have, I could actually have picked from any of the examples uh, that you can find of his work, mm, but really relating to, uh, yes, notions of there being cruelty and kindness and joy and 
sadness and laughter. Um, the feeling I get from this is actually definitely not of joy. No, it's, no, it's a uh, yeah. It's it's uh, there's like a silly frivolity, but it's also weirdly dark to me. There's a there's a, a, a symbol that gets used in on seashores in America, like at Asbury Park and stuff. I forget what the guy's name is, but there's like it's basically like a guy's head, sort of like the one sort of center left, right, where it's just like this smiling, like overly kind of excited, weird iconography, mm. and it always it's like the symbol of Asbury Park, New Jersey, on the beach, and it is always freaks me out and it makes me feel uncomfortable. And it's like this sort of caricature version of that kind of feeling. And I've never liked it. Then again, I don't, I'm weird about comedy in general in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm strange. But no, do, you, no, do you think, is, 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 is this commentary though to him? I don't know enough about his work. Like, what is he saying? Or what I does think, he say he's saying? Uh, okay. Well, you know, he, he's had a 10 year hiatus recently. He's only very recently started um, showing painting again and actually making paintings which have taken a slightly different turn actually he's no longer just using his own form uh, and he's not using the, the kind of laughing heads I mean there's lots of stuff about laughing Buddha in this and again kind of like a cultural misappropriation or um, for him a lot of this is just a comment on as we've already said uh, the notion of modern China that in sure. itself as a descriptor, is quite a strange descriptor. Modern China, you know, China in many ways is rapidly growing, exponentially expanding, yet it's also in a kind of stasis. You know, to introduce elements of capitalism, yet not, I guess, follow a particularly... What, what, well, I suppose a, a Western liberal model sure. is 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 quite odd. But then I would think that because I've grown up in a Western liberal model of of everything. <laughs> no one says democracy and capitalism have to go together, right? Right. So we anyway, that assumption. I I do want us to think: Can there ever be kindness and laughter? Not necessarily just in this painting, but more broadly. Let's think about that. Can there be kindness and laughter? Hmm. I, I would say yes, but I think the thing that gets laughed at has to be pretty. Look at what you're saying there, Bill. Can you laugh at something in kindness? Yeah, well, I mean, there's always the butt of the joke, right? Right. Is 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 yeah? Is is laughter inherently cruel? This is, this is, this is yeah. I was gonna say power driven. This is like you know, there there's is there inherently some sort of power differential in <laughs> laughter or in jokes? You know what I mean? In 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 because laughter. Do people laugh for joy though? You know, people laugh when smile and have ecstatic things when their children are born and those kinds of things you know well even when we think about a baby you know a baby laughs a very young child will laugh if you touch it or tickle it make a funny face make a funny noise true but are they doing that something quite benign in it? Face? yeah but you're humiliating yourself and therefore the baby laughs at it i mean is it right does it go back that far yes i think it does and I wouldn't it be, be right wouldn't it be interesting to kind of notice the associations we have when we laugh like what is our laughter actually you know i i laugh sometimes when i'm nervous yeah and um, in fact i know i know i laugh often when i'm nervous um, and laughter or is, is that unconscious a smile huh is that conscious or unconscious for you it's unconscious but i do notice i'm doing it once i'm doing it if you see what i mean okay yeah. Also, then I think, you know, is, is smiling different than laughing? You know, and kind of like primitive signaling to bare one's teeth, for example, is actually uh, an act of violence. It's, it's insightful to inciting rather the, you know, the attack or, 
showcasing one's gnashers is actually about uh, warning off. off. But when I think about smiling, smiling does have the capacity to be so much more simple or benign. Sure. Whereas the laugh, laughter is mm, something about it. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. I think smiling is about joy or 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 uh, um, sort of like being non-threatened there's there's something benign about joy that is not there with laughter no oh. and yet I can think about people who I have laughed with and where that kind of communal moment of laughing together has actually been profoundly uh, moving and connected Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. But then I don't think it's relevant even to say it's laughter that we are doing together and that there's there is just something shared. But but in but in those situations, was there a butt of the joke? It just wasn't one of you two. Mm. Yeah, then we're back into a dangerous thing, aren't we? You know, somebody somebody said something. <laughs> Somebody said a very, I was up, I was staring at the sky yesterday and somebody had sent me a joke the other day and it said, um, uh, Orion's belt, you know, the star configuration yeah. uh, is a waste of space, W-A-I-S-T. And then underneath it, it said, bad joke, only three stars. <laughs> so it was a, <laughs> so it was like, so there was like, you know, but, but like, I, and and I laughed at that because I like dad jokes. But secondarily, I look at that kind of thing and I think, who's harmed by that joke? You know what I mean? It made me laugh. There was laughter involved. Yeah. But it's just because it's silly. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's a good question. It's a very good question. Do you think that do you do you think that your subconscious laughing when you're uncomfortable is a way to make other people feel comfortable in a way that you're not? Like, I know I'm uncomfortable, but I'm gonna do this so that maybe you become more comfortable and therefore I will become more comfortable. You know what I mean? I wonder where your brain is going with that line of reasoning. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I'd have no, to I don't really look into it. Look at look at it in myself to try and work it out. Um, I don't know that I would want this painting on my wall. No, I definitely wouldn't. I I find this actually quite horrifying. I really don't <laughs> like this. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Anyway, you know, That's in terms cool. of how art does deal with um, humor, actually, there's lo- lots of paintings that take themselves terribly seriously. True. Um, but then there's also lots of work that, you know, could we say that any great art or is there any great art that actually has humor in it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you, you ever, about kind of the yeah. kind of more caricature type work. Um, Especially like the weird Middle Ages stuff where like, artists put themselves in their paintings being idiots or whatever you know those kinds of things yeah i mean playfulness is often yes exactly associated. that's definitely there right so that is there depictions of laughter though in in fine art history are kind of few and far between do you think because of the people who are paying for them or maybe it's more difficult to paint a model who's trying to smile because they're it's it's smiling is a transitory thing laughter is transitory you know what yes. I mean? and so i wonder you know that the the sense that one might capture a laugh you know the laughing cavalier which I have not included you know is he really laughing i mean if i want to see a painting of someone in a giant belly shuddering laugh i'm not I'm really not going to see it uh, anyway, this is an image that I thought is fascinating uh, in terms of how 
humans perceive laughter and then how other things interpret what laughter is. So this is not a man-made image. Oh, it's like an AI Dali kind of thing? Yeah, it's actually, uh, it's not Dali, it's Mid Journey. Okay. And I'm just trying to find the name of the person. It was an article uh, in, in a kind of online magazine that was explaining how through kind of periods of mental illness, there was this notion that, you know, what would, what would AI make of descriptions of um, like catharsis or like yeah. words that have got quite, can be transmutable easily. Anyway, the person was Hajijan Camps. I don't know where they are from, but they were writing the article, and they were the people. The, that was the person who fed the the language to generate the image. And the thing that was fed into uh, the AI was a man dances as if. Prozac was a cloud of laughter. And this is what was generated. It's not bad, actually. Well, isn't it fascinating? I mean, this to me is the most wonderful image. It's kind of ghoulish and ghastly, but at the same time, it seems kind of uh, truthful somehow. Truthful about yeah. that, that moment of laughter that spark of like, vivacity or whatever it is and I, I don't want to now start romanticizing last uh, laughter particularly but there is a sense that when one isn't being cruel with one's laughter there is just that again that word playfulness there is just that response that is carefree or that there's some incredible sense of release in laughter sure um, and I think that there's also something that this gets right is the sort of um, because it's got this blurred sort of nature. There's there's a, there's a time element to laughter. Laughter's not a not a moment; it's an activity. Yeah. So when you're you're putting it in a single frame, it's I mean it, this it it's got it's got tendencies towards a certain set of artwork that a guy that I know made with a bunch of dancers. <laughs> all right no but you know what i mean it's like it's the same kind of thing it's like you know this is not about where somebody is in a particular moment it's like some weird stacked version of where they are over the course of time yep and i think that that has this interestingly enough though the one thing that you really make out on the person is their mouth you know what i mean well, is that the thing that we always associate with laughter is the mouth I think that it's the thing that the AI associates with laughter. No, but is it what you associate with laughter? Yes, I would say so, yeah. And crinkled face. I don't think it's possible to laugh without having a goofy face. It's interesting, you know, but at the same time, you know, we were just making those cracks about the sort of, the sort of Middle Ages, early painting things, scenes of like, you know, a bunch of drunk people in a London whatever and some of them are laughing in these kind of slightly ghoulish ways, right? Like kind of, you know, red, the rosy cheeked kind of uh, uh, paintings of, of, of people, not middle ages, more like, you know, more like early Renaissance stuff of, of like, you know, people with the rosy cheeks laughing because they drank too much or whatever. This actually has a little bit of that sort of feel too. Especially the, uh, just the guy's face. The guy. It's like a painting. It's really good. Oh, you're saying that it's not a guy? I, I'm saying that it's AI that was not given any notion of gender. I know. Oh, I'm no, saying, no, I'm, I'm so saying... sorry. It was. It was a man, right? So isn't it funny, though, then we could take that to, like, the man is wearing a suit. <laughs> and Yeah, uh, well, that's, I mean, I, I, I am taking it just based upon the visuals, right? Like, it looks like he's dressed like a man. He looks like he's big-shouldered and... Looks like he has kind of a bit of a beard too, and the he crazy, like Tom yeah, the, me. the crazy. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, be on business. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but you're right. You know, it's funny. A friend of mine put up a bunch of stuff recently where he took a bunch of design work he had done and he, and he tried to describe it. And then he stuck that into one of these AI things. And then it came out with something and he compared what he had made to what it had made. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, look at this crap that it's made. And he was just like, Oh, got a lot of work to go. And I was just thinking, okay, the real test is if you gave that same description to a bunch of other human designers, mm-hmm. to see how close they would come. Cause my guess is that this thing is actually not that bad. And so I guess my point is that this actually isn't that bad. But it's Bill, it, good. it does again, still kind of bring up this question. Like what is laughter? You know, the AI thinks it knows what laughter looks like, right? Is, is, is laughter an uncomfortable expression of joy? Mm-hmm. There's something about it, though, that is, it, that is, th- there's something about laughter that I don't feel that is self-conscious to me. Well, sometimes there is just laughter and kindness or kindness and laughter. I've experienced that. I, I can say for sure that there have been moments in my life where just for for a fleeting moment you know, heady breathlessness of a moment <laughs> <laughs> something's made me laugh and something's made me laugh implies that the cause is being laughed at right which again has that root in like a kind of cruelty or violence but yeah. actually laughter happens in sweetness too yeah, it does. There's also, I find that there's a certain, there's an intimacy to laughter too. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, like a inside joke kind of thing, even if it's just the two of you alone. Yeah. Like we're having this experience no one else is having and no one will ever have. But here I, we are laughing you know, about it. There's this, and it is intimacy. And uh, thinking about those times, when I've shared laughter that hasn't been cruel in some way, at some deep level. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, maybe has still been a little nervous, but has kind of embodied momentarily that playful sweetness of love. Something loving. Sure. It's very rare. It does happen. It does. <clears throat> That's like um, having pride in someone without having pride in yourself for having gotten them there or something like that. Like there's there's some there's some sort of it's very um, it's like um, in those examples you're talking about. There's like a reduction of self. I think. Now we're into the territory I love. It's <laughs> a funny thing I know. I'm being careful with my words. <laughs> funny thing Hello, is. Sandy, don't yeah. become too esoteric. We don't have time tonight. By the way, does everybody notice that Bill is not in his usual location? He is, in fact, True. speaking to me from Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. Which is much... BBC fun- reports from Martha's Vineyard, where airplanes... Fall- See, right, I'm laughing, but I'm laughing at you. Um, hey, that's, that's exactly my point. <laughs> anyway, quote from George Orwell, I thought it was a, an interesting quote. A thing is funny when, in some way that is not actually offensive or frightening, it upsets the established order. Every joke is a tiny revolution. This is, I mean, I have, even in comedy nowadays, there's, you know, lots of, questions about what you're allowed to make jokes about and all those kinds of things right i mean it's a universal thing but it's been especially strong over the last five years or so yeah um i mean i tend to go on the air on the side of it's comedy offending somebody a little bit is kind of the point everyone like every joke has somebody who's going to get offended by it um and i'm certainly not going to police and tell somebody what they can and cannot make a joke about um, but I don't find it funny. I don't find it funny. Uh, so I think in some ways this is true. And if anything, like in some ways, if you're not offending somebody, maybe you're not going far enough in comedy, you know, but, but, but 
laughing. Yeah. Do you think every joke is a tiny revolution? Maybe because it disrupts and changes the direction things are otherwise going. Yeah. You know, Even in conversation. We know we know that all the time, don't we? That people yep. interject with something to break a to break a flow. And very often that's laughter or humor in some way. We we know that we use laughter to diffuse otherwise tense situations, which is strange because actually the laughter itself can be quite tension filled. Yep. Can't it? Anyway, we're gonna finish with Rousseau. Not because the dream is necessarily a hilarious painting, but because actually I was really, it's a meditation on how much Rousseau was ridiculed in his lifetime. By people who thought it looked like children's books? Yeah, so, you know, when he was working, he's a curious character anyway. He was a toll booth ticket collector or something. He never left France, even though he painted these lush, verdant forests and jungles. Um, he got most of his inspiration, by all accounts, from the zoo in Paris. Um, but, I mean, he did devote his life later to art, um, and he was ridiculed by a great many people, and it wasn't until much, much later on, you know, he didn't live a long life, but much later on and then posthumously that he was actually realised as a most masterful self-taught artist who really pushed the envelope of what <laughs> what was uh, expected or accepted in early tw early twentieth century Western Western art, French art particularly. I think um, this is definitely on the, on the list of of art styles and works that you have to have the date in order to understand the context. You know what I mean? Like if you made if somebody painted this in nineteen seventy five. You'd think, oh, they did too much acid and they were hanging out with hippies for too long. <laughs> but looking at it and saying this came from 1910, yeah, this is pre World War One. Well, that just puts it in different perspective. Yes, but back to this idea of it being ridiculed. Now, yeah. this is a figure of fun, somebody who was laughed at quite openly, both in um, the kind of critical circles in context again think obviously at this time in Paris the convergence of what we now think of as like the titans of modern art history you know um it, he was ridiculed publicly for anything he showed I mean he showed I think about 20 paintings over the course of his sort of preliminary career um, and each time he was torn apart and not just the case of this painting's rubbish. I mean, you know, people made fun of him quite actively. It became almost like a sport. Yeah. And I've always found this interesting. A few years ago, many years ago, actually, at Tape Modern, uh, there was a retrospective of Rousseau. And I remember reading one of the blurbs written on the wall about his work. Um, it's to do with uh, Le Banquet Rousseau that Picasso arranged, inviting all the luminaries from Montmartre and further afield in Paris, uh, 1908, that I think Picasso actually made him a throne, like a kind mm -hmm. of throne-like seat and made him sit at the table. Now, up to a point, Picasso sometimes is credited with kind of not discovering Rousseau, but certainly um, bringing him out from the kind of shadowy lands of critical, you know, annihilation. But at the same time, he was also someone who probably was quite cruel to him. And Rousseau, either through just being absolutely elephant hided or by being uh, deliberately subversive, would quite openly claim himself to be a great artist of the age. And it really pissed people off. And it made people laugh at him even more because they yeah. questioned how such a buffoon could consider himself amongst the luminaries like Picasso. Do you think he really believed it? Who? Rousseau. Rousseau. 
Uh, or was it, or was that a defense mechanism unto itself? Maybe. I mean, he, he, he certainly toiled for this craft. You know, he worked hard at being a painter. Sure. Uh, I've always felt with Rousseau that he's actually, in one way, has got a very interesting push and pull between being totally closed, almost like hermetically sealed somehow. Okay. Uh, possibly to do with his lack of um, ambition to go beyond France ever. Yet at the same time, and perhaps because of that, or in spite of that, the fact is his imagination must have been working well to, to sort of envisage these, these scenes. Well, yeah, it feels like there was, there, there may not have been, you know, uh, external exploration, but there certainly was internal exploration. You know, at 66, he died of like an infected leg wound. That's not a good way to go. No, no, absolutely not. Um, he was known by everyone, but it's the way in which he was known. You know, he knew Gertrude Stein. He knew, um, well, that whole circle. You can imagine them converging, as I said. Sure. Early 19th, yeah. 20th century. Um, yeah, you know, he was invited to show with the Fauves. Uh, so what, what, sometimes people somewhere must have credited, credited him with some kind of talent or at least unusual style. I think that there are also people, and while I don't think I'm this person, I know a lot of people who are, and I always feel bad about this person. But I always think that there's somebody in a group that ends up, even though they're part of the group, end up being the butt of the joke a lot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, in some ways, we keep you around because you're the one we can all take pot shots at. But simultaneously, the only reason you can be in our group is because we do think that you're like us. It's like this weird, passive-aggressive... I don't know. It's not a good thing. I see it in I see it in like circles of friends a lot of times. And, yeah, and I, have, I mean, I've I have I, n not really since school have I had a circle of friends, and yeah. part of the reason is this: you know, groups of humans who claim themselves to be close buddies are always actually. I've I've, I've watched it. I observe it all the time. I see it in school all the time with little friendship groups. There is always this toxic uh, okay. element, uh, and, and there's always one person in there who's not really part of the group, but still part of the group. That I, I think that so maybe Rousseau was that person. Yes, I think I think so. I think. Do you think? Do you care if people laugh at you? Do you think it's possible to not care if people laugh at you? Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, it's an interesting thing because, you know, obviously all day long I'm standing up in front of groups of people. Yeah, kids uh, are laughing at you all the time, probably. Yeah, they are. You know, you just have to accept it. There'll be something about me invariably every day. You know, even uh, this week, actually, we we're not long back at school after the summer break. And there is a group of young people in a class I see every day who like to do things deliberately, quietly, subversively to wind me up. Yeah. Right? And part of that is because they like to laugh about it. Now, right. that is, um, you know, that's like standard teenage yeah. stuff. So it doesn't impact me the way it might if I were one of their peers right uh, yeah. but it's still not a pleasant experience and that's not just because it undermines for example a sense of authority that a teacher must have or should have in a classroom blah 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 I'm not particularly yeah. interested in those dynamics what I am fascinated by is what are they laughing for what are they laughing at 
why do they think that it's a great thing to laugh at my displeasure, for example? And that's I think it's all, all social dynamics. Isn't it fascinating though? Like what is it about yeah. you know, you, I mean, it actually you, it's, it's irrelevant that it's me. It could be any member of staff, right? But after you know years and years of doing this, can you shut them down? Well, in as much as any teacher in a classroom has a has a stockpile of kind of strategies for <laughs> dividing and conquering, for example. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> which which that, probably not- occasionally, occasionally, your strategies for knocking it off probably end up humiliating one or more of those people and people laugh at that other the what like you know what I mean like invariably just by dividing and conquering you could be the instigator of the laughs at times probably maybe but I I think that as a skilled teacher practitioner that's less likely to happen <laughs> she's like I I I am perfect in everything that I do <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it is something that I, I notice at school a lot. I notice it amongst the children and the way they are with each other. I notice it with yeah. the, the students interacting with me and with my colleagues. And I, of course, I notice it amongst my own peer group and how we're all responding to each other. You know, my mum used to say to me, I can't, what is the rhyme? There was a little smile that went a little, no, there was a little smile that went a little mile. Oh, I can't remember it's something like, and then it holds it dear and becomes a little tear and that there's a sense that like you know if you're laughing you're actually close to crying um you know very often yeah, it, I found that I I often come out of crying or weeping into laughter and likewise sure. over time if I laugh I suddenly realize that in the hysteria perhaps there's a release for something that's deeply troubling me I start crying so um it's cathar- laughing is cathartic, as is crying. So they're close to each other. On the spectrum, as it were. Is art a funny business, Bill? <laughs> if you're trying to be an artist, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hilarious how awful it is. <laughs> you're a funny guy and funny looking. Uh, funny looking. It's because I cut off all my hair. <laughs> it is a vast improvement. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what they all say. <laughs> half the people love it. Half the people hate it. I don't like any of it. Well, Bill, are you going to come back and speak to me again? Or am I going to have to wait another six weeks? Uh, no, I think I think uh, I think we're now that we're back in school. I think we're uh, back. On you track. don't have COVID. <laughs> and I don't have COVID. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um. I think that I think that maybe there's a conversation to be had and maybe I can come up with some slides for this. Really? Uh, well, I'm thinking because William Klein died the other day that a conversation about street photography and the ethics of street photography might be interesting. Go I'll, down. I'll, come, I'll come up with some ideas. What's that? John Luke Goddard died as well. Yes, as as well. Yes. Mm. Although if we start talking about cinema, then we're in real trouble. Well, especially because you can never help me put moving image onto these stupid slides. I'm working on it. I'm gonna have to get PowerPoint and figure that out. Anyway, uh, but it was very funny talking to you today. Well, I laugh in the face of adversity. <laughs> Bye, Bill. Bye, Cindy.